Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox, Synchrobol Space Program 1.12 where I continue to contemplate the shuttle on the Trident rocket in an effort to give the shuttle a payload capacity that would be better. Uh, with this configuration it has a capacity of 70 tons to low Earth orbit whereas normally the shuttle with its normal external tank and boosters gets about 25 tons to low Earth orbit at maximum. So having the Blue Origin New Glenn first stage as a booster on either side and then having a similarly shaped tank in the center to feed the shuttle's main engines uh, so that's for manufacturing purposes not because it's the same tank of course uh, the first stage uh, tank for New Glenn uses met or is filled with methane and oxygen whereas for the shuttle main engines we need hydrogen and oxygen so it's gonna be different but I figure that having it shaped the same would mean that manufacturing it would be easier and I've called this the Trident rocket because we have three similar bodies like that. So in this configuration we get 70 tons to low Earth orbit and I've been thinking about using it to construct large things. However, I had just noticed that I had left the main engines here configured to the default RS-25s when I tested it in the previous video. So I had this configuration here and well I mean there's upgrades here and so I naturally thought that I should switch to the RS-25D slash E and that's until I looked at the stats well there are benefits and drawbacks to this as it turns out uh, with the default RS-25 which I tested in the previous video just barely got a 70 ton payload to lower orbit not including the shuttle itself of course that's 70 tons in the bay uh, that engine has 20 uh, or 2090 kilonewtons of thrust and an ISP of 363 to 455. But then this one has more thrust, about 300 kilonewtons more thrust, but its specific impulse, its efficiency is 366 to 452. So it actually has less efficiency at the top end in vacuum than this one does. And I don't know if everybody notices this. I, I, I mean, maybe they do, maybe they don't. And incidentally, this version doesn't even actually normally throttle up all the way. Normally, it doesn't use its maximum thrust. That's only for aborts. So is it good to have this slightly more sea level optimized because the specific impulse is 366 at sea level. This one is 363. Is it better to have this one that is more sea level optimized with more thrust or is it better to have this one which is more vacuum optimized with less thrust but also less mass uh, the mass of it is 3.527 tons this one is 3.756 tons so about 0.2 tons extra or does it not matter at all so that is the question we're going to ask so uh, I'm going to switch them to well we already know that the default configuration, the RS-25, this one, can get the 70 tons to lower orbit, but exactly how much is left over is our question. And that is when I'm going to take it outside to find out. We'll have to trust the Delta V figure from MechJeb, and then we'll compare that to the situation with the D slash E. And the others uh, sort of match D slash E more than the original version. Um, they both have uh, actually, the A is pretty bad. Uh, the A has worse ISP in on both of them for some reason, and then but a little bit more thrust. They seem to optimize it for thrust, thrust, and then the C is very similar to the D slash E. So I will just go for the two main configurations and see what happens. And none of the little funny configurations in the middle for now. <laughs> for now. All right, let's take it outside and see how it goes. 70 tons in the base still. I'm just going to leave the full Delta V stats up there. That is our point of interest. But one thing to note is the low thrust weight ratio at the start. Maybe having more powerful engines on the space shuttle might be useful. I'm going to use the same launch script both times. At 
leave it a lot of time to spool up and still it goes down a bit. That's just how it is. Now, the new Glenn boosters are gonna reserve some propellant for their own landing. I'm not doing the landing yet, eventually I'll hope to get to that. Uh, I've tried to entice Pekka into doing the landing script for these as well, since he's done such a good job with Super Heavy. But we'll see. I have to make the fins proper and actually put RCS on these things and stuff like that. Unlike the real space shuttle, this is not going to throttle down through max Q and maximum dynamic pressure, and that's because we aren't going at such a high thrust weight ratio anyway. The real shuttle starts off with 1.5 at sea level, so this number would have been 1.5. By now it'd be past 2 if it didn't throttle down. On the space shuttle as well, the boosters have a thrust curve in, so they throttle down as well, but because we're not throttling down here, it'll be very consistent between the two tests. Okay, booster set. And they have reserved some fuel for their landing. I'm pretty sure it'll be enough. And so there's the general situation at the separation. All right, we're coming close to the end, so I have to take a look at the number up there very closely. And also probably our orbital numbers down there, or here. Now we're not going to make orbit here. The shuttle's OMS engines finish up orbit, but I'm only interested in what it ends up. So 60 meters per second is what's left. After it gets done with the burn, we're at 272 by 52. And so it does a separation maneuver, but I'm not going to wait for the OMS burden. We're mainly interested in the effect of the RS-25s, and they have done their job. We're not fully in orbit, but we are in this kind of situation, and we will complete orbit. And it's not really showing the delta V in the shuttle, right? That's because it was pretending that we were going to decouple the payload first, and then complete orbit, but really the shuttle has 282 left. But the important thing was that the external tank had 60 left, according to MechJib anyway. So let's change the engines and see what happens. So D slash E version. Now the propellant mix is the same for both versions. I checked the realism overhaul configuration, so it uses the same ratio of hydrogen and oxygen. That's not a big and that's not a problem, I don't have to change the tank. And again, same script. Need to rearrange the staging here, because otherwise we would accidentally stage the payload. Keep forgetting to do that in the VAB. Okay, we're on our way. But you can see it started with a little bit more thrust weight ratio, but not a whole lot. It's not a big difference. One side effect that I don't know whether it's good or bad or not is that they'll be using more of the external tank fuel while the boosters are still on than the default version, the RS-25, without any letters. But it's still an open question whether I want to use this to construct a large mission or whether I want to use the Orion carrier plane. This has more historical relevance and of course real hardware involved, whereas the Orion carrier plane is more novel in a way. Uh, the Orion carrier plane and the Mini Star are fully reusable. This is almost fully reusable. The external tank is not. This can carry 70 tons to orbit 
The Orion carrier plane and Mini Star can carry about 40 to 45 tons to orbit on one go. But the fairing in the front of the Mini Star is larger, so it has more volume, well, more diameter than the Shuttle Bay does. The Shuttle Bay is only 4.5 meters in diameter, whereas the fairing on the Mini Star is about 6 to 6.6 .6 potentially. So they each have their benefits and drawbacks. Mind you, this stack is nearly three times the launch mass of the Mini Star and Orion carrier plane. That's a lot. And of course the reason why it's nearly three times the launch mass but doesn't get three times the payload is because it's carrying the shuttle itself every time. And the shuttle is very massive. If you throw in the shuttle's mass, then obviously you'll get plenty of payload capacity out of this. So you guys can tell me which you would like to have construct a large mission. The shuttle on this, which will have diameter constraints, or the Mini Star and Orion carrier plane, which will have more mass constraints than this does. Thrust weight ratio a little bit high here. Probably should fall down, but they're off now. Now they are off. But I told it not to throw down so that we just have a consistent sort of situation. We also start off with a higher thrust weight ratio here now and a shorter burn time, of course. All right, 18 meters per second. So very bare there. So it performed worse. The extra thrust didn't help in this situation and the lower vacuum specific impulse hurt but not a huge amount about 42 meters per second but if you're finding yourself in sort of a tight situation you might want to consider that it might not be the best thing to use the most upgraded rs25s and instead try to use the rs25 the base level rs25 instead of the rs25 d slash e the reason they were upgraded was for aborts and stuff like that and, you know, that's all complicated, but for KSP reasons, you might be able to get away with a little bit more if you just use the normal RS-25s. Well, I call them normal, but the base level RS-25s with the juicy 455 second ISP instead of the 452. Uh, so that's just food for thought. I only just realized that <laughs> so because of this situation. Uh, in previous attempts when I was testing this out, it actually didn't manage to complete that burn at all. Uh, the 18 turned into zero, basically. So, I don't know why it decided to behave a little bit better this time, but it did. So, that is the situation. Then I thought it was interesting enough to make a video on it, because people normally don't think that the less upgraded version is better and but in this case it's just a little bit better it turns out so anyway the shuttle will complete orbit here with its oms engines it still has the 282 that we or 280 i guess uh maybe use oh no there's 282 it depends on how the engines are gimbling the little oms engines or oh, I, I forget if they gimbal they do well, something is causing it to go from 280 to 279 to 282. All right. Well, it's getting ready for its OMS burn here. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.